With their cup dream at a crossroads, the Rangers chose the high road. High intensity, high octane, and a high result. 3-1 the final in Game 3 at Madison Square Garden. The series now 2-1 in favor of the Hurricanes. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Gianone, Henrik Lundqvist, and Steve Valaket. A markedly different game than what we saw in Games 1 and 2, maybe even combined with the amount of pressure at both ends, but the Rangers were the ones that applied most of it. Yeah, I thought that was a great hockey game. The intensity was there clearly and a lot of chances both ways. Great goaltending. Really the eager set the tone in that first period because the Carolina Hurricanes yeah. came out flying and they pushed them back a lot in the first period. But then we talked about going into the game, the power play needed to step up. Mm -hmm. and so they did with Mika and, and then Kreider on that second goal. You know, what I look at right now is, is what is this time of year all about? It's about character. It's either going to expose you or elevate you. And there were specific players tonight, starting with Igor, elevated. Zabanajad elevated. You see the star guys step up. And as soon as two go, three or four show up. And I think they inspire one another. I'm inspired. I never doubted it, Giannone. <laughs> when do you ever? <laughs> 17 shots on goal for Carolina in the first period, 18 in the second, 9 in the third, 44 in all, and Igor Shesterkin stopped all but one of them in a performance that the Rangers desperately needed when you consider what 2-1 down looks like versus 3-0. Oh, 3-0, you're toast, right? But here's the thing. Igor... He likes to get a lot of work. I expected game one in Carolina to look like tonight, which is game three. He just had to wait six periods to see it. And this is what it looked like. It was a lot of work. He had to get the shots. He had to get warm early. And he stood up to everything they threw at him. The key guys, when they shoot a lot, is that he controls the puck. Of all of the shots that was coming from the outside, it was either a save, and I love this play here, Hank, where he That's surprised with the poke check. Great, great, great read. read. But his, his rebounds were controlled, and when they weren't controlled, he got help. Everybody was willing to pitch in, and that's why the offensive output of Carolina, it didn't match the volume of the shots they had. I mean, everything was just clean. His pace was great in this game, Hank. I thought yeah, that his patience was He looked really sharp. And other than maybe the first 12 minutes of the game, after that you could tell the Rangers were in better structure. And then you looked in the, in the third period, yeah, they gave up some shots, but a lot of good structure, a lot of boxing out in front of Igor so he can see the shots. And that, made, that makes a huge difference for any goalie when you can see the puck. But again, the Carolina Hurricanes, they opened the game really strong and they had probably their best looks in the first yeah. period. But, uh, you know, Igor came through with a huge performance here. and. and Again, talking about the power play, I think it's so important against this team because they're very good defensively. They have so much structure and it's hard to create the big chances. So this is exactly what needed to happen, I think, for, yeah. for them to turn this around. Yeah, you summarized it perfectly because in the first 12 minutes, the Carolina Hurricanes had a 13-3 to shot advantage. Then the Rangers get a power play opportunity yeah. and they go right to work. And that's a massive part of this game, taking that first goal at home with the crowd behind them. It was big because the pace was just going the wrong way. That happened two or three times in this game where the power play for the Rangers nullified and really stopped all of the momentum from Carolina. And when you look at the way the Rangers were able to set up, that's the big difference. You're able to get set up on the power play, you're getting off the walls, you're getting your first looks, and then you're building off of that. And the players, guys, they'll tell you, they need that power play time because it's so tight at five on five. Yeah. They need to have that time and space that it frees up and allows you to look get your at the confidence. five on five. The top guys, they don't have a lot of time holding on to pucks. So on the power play, it's really the only time they have an opportunity to hold on to it because yeah. Carolina is forechecking them so hard. So on the power play, again, they have an opportunity to feel a little good about their own game and move it around because yeah. other than that, it's hard for them to sustain pressure because the way Carolina is playing defense. And it's Mika Zibanejad, right? Like, I thought he was the most noticeable Ranger, guys, right off puck drop. And it's not a surprise that he's the goal scorer in this game early. His, fir his to first get them going. period was unbelievable. His first uh, period was awesome. He was everywhere. His skating was great. And, and again, we talked about going into this game. It was so important to set the tone. Even though Carolina had the first 12 minutes, Mika, you, you could pass, sense Anderson. early on that he was going to have a night, the way he, he was. was skating and creating chances and, and then his big shot on, on the power play. So 
You've always said that about his legs, though, right, Hank? As soon as he sees opportunity and open ice and his legs are so strong to get him there to do it. He just looks faster when yeah. he's feeling it. It's funny. You watch him play in, in the games where he's really feeling it. He just flies by guys and creates chances just by his skating. You see that play with the stick went flying in behind the net? <laughs> Carolina thought they had something there. They didn't like it. And here's Prior the second scores. goal. Yeah, yeah, that's a great shot. Um, but this line, yeah, they did, did everything they need to do tonight, tonight to keep the series alive. Mm. And that shot there, fellas, it, it fools Ranta because he goes up against his post on that one. We talked about yeah. that. We were lucky enough to be in the garden tonight watching from up top. You wait for a second to show up on the replay, and you see that Ranta's trying to get across. And I, I want the Ranger fans to pay attention to this. I thought we saw a lot of rebounds. The goal right. was scored right yep. here, but a lot of rebounds. It seemed to me like the Rangers were really targeting his blocker side, but inside the body, and that's why they were able to keep a lot of their chances in the O zone alive. The puck kept coming off of him. He was also very early coming across. And what happens when you're early as a goal, we saw it in the Pittsburgh game sometimes. It, the goalie come across very early, it becomes a two motion to make that save instead of having a one motion. If you come across perfectly to time that shot, it's a one motion to attack the puck. But when you're early like that, he comes across and kind of sits still for a little bit. So he's kind of frozen. Yeah. And then when he shot, he probably expected a high shot. He goes right over the pad, and it's just a little too slow to react to it. But it's a lot harder when you're early sometimes than to have one motion come into that shot. He did a really good job of cooperating with what the Rangers needed this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that goal for Zibanej had the first for the Rangers in 124 minutes and 13 seconds in this series. So that loosened them up a little bit. It was one nothing after one. They go to the second period. That next goal game mentality you can kind of sense inside the garden. And it was less than six. Six minutes in, we saw the Kreider goal. Let's take a closer look at it now, Stevie. Yeah, the important thing for Chris Kreider, Mika Zibanejad, and now when you're moving the guys up top and you've got Heedle to start. Now, it didn't finish that way, but it just seemed to ignite them and the energy was helpful. It was a change and it really helped. You see Heedle here, he reads really well off Zibanejad and the communication, it seemed instantaneous. Being able to cut back, hold it on the wall, and what you're looking for here is to get it cross corner so everybody can recover and now everybody's in a position to move and now the low cycle begins this was a big part of the game plan here this afternoon how are you going to work the canes watch the stick lift there from Zibanejad very smart how are you going to work the canes below their dots you're not going to turn the puck over you're in a safe zone here on defensive posture there's the second one <laughs> that's pretty neat though twice he lifted the stick now the far side is wide open here for Kreider because once again, getting back to the theme of Ranta sitting on the right post, he was down in that reverse VH incorrectly too long. There was angle far side for yeah. Kreider. And when you play uh, a team that's that structured defensively, you have to take what they give you. And in this position, when, when Kreider comes around the net, I think he's, he's obviously looking for something else, yeah. but realizes what they give me right now is that shot, take it. It's going to be hard to find that perfect play because that shot from that angle, it's not the perfect play. Yeah. But he took what they gave him, and it was a 2 nothing game. Yep, and Kreider's sixth of the postseason. Rangers still had half the game to try to kill off. Nino and Ryder scored a little more than two minutes later, and it was 2-1 right down to the final seconds when Tyler Mott scored into the empty net. 